options. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody. Is everybody happy to be here? Yes. Apparently, it might possibly be the first day of spring. If it indeed is so, yes. Amen. <laughs> I'll just start with a word of prayer, and then we'll go into a song. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the sun that's now shining and it's coming out. We thank you, Father, that you've created all these wonderful things with your hands. You created us. You created us to serve you, to lift you up, to honor you, to have a relationship with you. And today we want to worship you. We want to just magnify your holy name. So I pray that we here will come together, both those online, those who are here in this moment. If there is more coming, we pray that you just bring them, bring them in faster so that they can have the time to worship with us, to be in your presence here today because we know that you are here in this place. We thank you, Father, for fellowship, for the art of relationship and what it means to be in something like that with you. It's a beautiful, beautiful opportunity that you've given us. And so we thank you today. And we praise your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'll get you guys to stand. This one's kind of a dancer. great day to be in God's house today. You know, um, we are in the third Sunday of Lent um, on the Christian calendar, and I want to read um, this reading this morning um, from Exodus chapter 3, starting at verse 1, and I'm going to read down to verse 8. It says this, one day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the, the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses. 
Here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the fa- I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt, and I have heard their cries of distress because of the harsh, harsh slave drivers. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites now live. Hmm. We'll end the, the reading of the word there. During Lent, it is a time where we seek the Lord um, through acts of surrender, through acts of uh, giving up things, and just seeking God, being close to him. And so I hope uh, during this period of time that as we are journeying towards the cross that you are seeking the Lord, that you are coming into um, uh, his presence each day and, yeah, just talking to him and seeking him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful today that you have given us this period of Lent. And we know, Father, that it is the 40 days in the wilderness where this idea comes from, where we do, we want to seek you. We want our bodies and our minds and our thoughts and our spirits to be in complete and total surrender to you. I pray, Father, that as we continue on this journey, that you would meet with us. You would meet with us in the secret place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you are our King of kings and Lord of lords. And that you paid the ultimate price for us on the cross. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. We're going to have some announcements. We're doing a Loretta Lynn. We're doing a Loretta Lynn song. Woo. I like Loretta Lynn. All right, uh, announcements for March. Sunday morning pre-worship and prayer times begin at 10 a.m. And if you would like to join us um, either in person or on Zoom, then please reach out because I can send you the Zoom link on Sunday mornings as well for you to join with us. Okay, Uh, back to basics. Wednesdays from 4.30 to 6 p.m. here at the church. Uh, That's every Wednesday. Sharing the Burden, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Doors open at 6.30 for refreshments and prayer. And we just want to journey with those who are um, just trying to live life on life's terms. Uh, Tutoring, Monday to Friday here at the church. uh, We offer uh, tutoring for grades 1 through uh, 11. And we have a board certified teacher who who journeys with the students. And so we have a few spots that are sponsored. And if you are in need of some assistance, we would love to help you out there. So join us. Bible study with Pastor Jen and Ken. uh, Thursdays from 7 to 8.30 p.m. We are currently uh, looking at Revelation. And so we're looking at all the different churches in Revelation. And so... I can only go so far on a Sunday morning with with uh, the discussion, and so we actually pick up on Thursday nights uh, where we leave off here, and um, then I normally share it on Facebook on Friday morning. So if you'd like to join us, we would love to have you. The discussions are great and good. Ah, Good Friday dance presentation. So the kids are going to do an interpretive dance, and uh, Kim... Uh, one of our members here, she is going to lead them through it and teach them. And so there will be a practice today uh, after, the, after the service from 12 to 1 p.m. And lunch will be provided. And interested in knowing what we as a Nazarene denomination believe. 
Um, we will be having membership classes for three weeks starting on March 27th uh, from 12 to 1 p.m. here at the church. And if you are interested, please let me know uh, so I can make sure that you uh, have all the information that you need before we start. So, men's coffee hour, the fourth Sunday of the month from 10.30 to 11.30. You will need to bring your own McDonald's or coffee or whatever but it is uh, the fourth Saturday of the month. Volunteers, we are on the cusp of starting a new lunch program called Just Breathe. And we, um, we're actually going to begin doing the training and all of that. We have enough volunteers to do three, um, three Thursdays. And so we will rotate for the three, the three Thursdays for now until we have more volunteers come forward. So if you would like to, uh, please let me know or, or Pastor Rosemary so that we can uh, get you hooked up with that. Awesome. And these are all the different ways that you can find us. Um, YouTube, Facebook, and www.cpcotn.com as well. And it is that time in our service where we do um, just set aside some time to give thanks to the Lord for the things that he has provided. Um, I, did, I didn't make a slide, but I do have a total. So our giving from March 1st to the 13th is $3,765. And so we need a monthly total of almost $6,000 for us to be able to uh, break even. And uh, again, you know, that is, that is, again, just breaking even. So um, let's just pray. And Father, we're so thankful that you do provide everything that we need. You are the, the one who not only provides what we need, Father, but then you, you provide the excess as well, Father. And so we give you thanks for that, Lord. I pray, Father, for the fact that you have given us the ability to earn money, to, to, um, to care for our families, and also, Lord, to give back to you. So, Father, I pray that you would use not only the gift, but the giver as well to build your kingdom, Lord. Uh, money is just one small part of how your kingdom is built. And so, Lord, we just give you thanks for everything that you're doing and ask, Father, that you would increase these, um, these givings so that we can build your kingdom here. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Well, it is that time where Pastor Rosemary is going to give us a God update. <laughs> I knew I should have read my book. Oh, yes. I forgot two announcements. Next Sunday, we'll be having chili with the chilies. Uh, after lunch, uh, after lunch, after the service next week, we'll be having chili with the chilies. Um, and then also, uh, NCM Canada um, is uh, a Nazarene Compassionate Ministries, and they are taking up an offering for the Disaster Relief Fund for Ukraine. And so if you would like to give to that, then uh, just mark it down on an envelope, put it in the church at the back, or in the message portion of your e-transfer, you can also say how much of your, your giving is donated towards that, and we will make sure that it gets there to where it needs to go. Thank you. Well, I'm going to give you an opportunity to share a moment this week when God uh, made himself plain to you, but I just want to start off by saying that that song that we sang the first song we sang when we all get to heaven that's an oldie my gosh I remember singing that a long time ago what a day of rejoicing that will be and and I, I it reminded me in my olden days I used to walk I don't mean walk down the street I mean walk so I did halfway across Spain with the pilgrimage of Santiago and then there's a pilgrimage that actually goes every summer in August from Guelph to Midland and I did that one as well and uh, I remember you travel, you know, 20, 25 kilometers in a day, and you're absolutely exhausted getting to your next spot. And as you're walking in, whoever has reached there already forms a line and sings you in. And I thought, that's what heaven's going to be like. People just 
sing and ascend to heaven. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. And it just brought me to tears remembering those moments because I literally burst into tears the first time that happened. And the lead of our group was a doctor and he came running to me. He said, are you okay? Are you okay? I said, no, I'm fine. I said, I just live in heaven right now. I'm just experiencing what heaven will be like. So I brought back a lot of great memories. The pastor called me this week and she said, I just need to warn you. Things are going to be a little upset in the church. So what else is new? But uh, <laughs> this is a great thing to be upset about. Uh, I love the fact that there is mess, that it's mess because uh, we're giving a whole, uh, sending off a whole uh, crate to East Watini this week. And it's just great to see the giving that's taken place and to know that uh, it's going to be here one day and in a couple of months it's going to be in the hands of people who are so thankful, who haven't had a, a package since 2018 from us. So being able to send the clothes off and the books off and all the things that we have, filing cabinets in the hallway, what a great thing to rejoice in. Um, one of my skills that's not very good for me is math. I was part of the era where you could actually stop taking math in grade eight. Yes, I know, that era has passed. Uh, but I stopped taking math in grade eight. So when I have to do financials and work on financials for the Freedom Center, it scares the bejeebies out of me. So I am thankful this week that I got in touch with an accountant uh, who helps uh, agencies like ourselves through Veterans House Charity that will actually help me with the financials. So I'm thankful for that. And if I look a little tired, it's because I'm thankful we had a March break and I had a week off with the kids and we traveled all over the place and did a lot of great things together. And those times are very, very special and precious because those times will end, I know. So I'm thankful for the times we can be together. Do you have a moment that, that came to you this morning uh, that you thought, you know, God was in that moment for me. God touched me in that moment. God made himself known to me. I want to open the floor and give you a chance to share something today. Yes. Okay, uh, today I heard from Father in Heaven, and he told me, um, well, I'll just paraphrase, because I'm not very eloquent, um, so you have to excuse me if I go into simple words here. Um, he basically told me that his people have trouble with being patient, and he didn't mean being patient to get our food on time or for the bus to come. He didn't mean that. What he was telling me was patient with getting answers to the prayers, patient with seeing results in our lives. And he, tells, he told me today that he answers prayers in his time not our time. He knows when the right opportunity is going to present itself where he can come in there and make things his way. And he also told me that one of the reasons that the churches are so messed up these days, and I'm not pointing fingers at this specific church, I'm talking about others that I've been to, it all starts from lack of faith which, and lack of obedience, which in essence comes right to not being patient. If I'm patient, if I'm patient, my faith is going to be stronger. And if my faith is stronger, I'm not going to doubt that my prayers are going to be answered. So that was my word from Father in Heaven this morning. And all I can say is, and I really mean this, praise Father in Heaven. He's the Almighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He loves all of us, and he is true to his word. Praise Father in Heaven. <laughs> Anybody else have a word of encouragement or a word that God has given to you or a Something that's happened this week, you say, yeah, God was really present in that. He made himself known for me. I'm talking. <laughs> they wanted an explanation of what we were doing. <laughs> Did God do something for you this week? No. Okay. <laughs> Thank 
you for sharing. <laughs> Well, kiddos, who would like to come up here and do our memory verse and sing a song with me? There comes my baby. Hello. How about over this way, honey? Oops, oops. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Oh, my. Wow. Wow, that's beautiful. Watch. All right, okay, wow, okay. So our verse is, let the trees, you ready? Let the, the trees that's of, the forest, of the forest sing for joy, sing for joy before, the Lord, before the Lord. For he is coming, for he is coming to take us to McDonald's. To take us to McDonald's. <laughs> he might. But he's actually coming to judge the earth. Do you know what that means? To judge the earth? What? To judge everyone? That's right, to judge everyone. God is the ultimate judge. Yes, honey? Does he have a hammer? Um, he might have a hammer. Say that again, honey. I didn't hear you. Say that again. Say that again. That's right. When God comes to judge us, he's going to judge us on the things that we do. Right? And you know, yes, you can ask me anything. You have like a sand in your teeth. Like, really? Yeah. Really? Well, maybe you'll have to floss them. That's what happens sometimes when I get, it feels like little sands or sometimes it feels like my teeth have sweaters. And that's a good sign that you got to brush them. I, I'm just saying. I didn't brush my teeth. Oh, oh. Well, okay. I so Jesus, that's good. Uh, Jesus is coming, and Jesus is going to judge the earth, and he is going to judge all people on what we do. But you know what? If Jesus is our friend and lives in our heart, what about then? What will happen if Jesus comes then when he lives in our heart? He will help love us. us. Be good and listen. That's right, but when he lives in our heart and he comes, he's going to take us where? Heaven. That's right, we're going to go to heaven. Woo! I we got to go. Okay, all right. Okay, well, he might. There might be McDonald's in heaven. Extra fries, okay, okay. And, uh, you know, I hope they got chicken nuggets in heaven. Okay, let's sing our song. Because... Jesus gives us joy, doesn't he? Yes, and where does the joy live? In our feet. And the joy, 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 darling, my heart. Where? Darling, my heart. Darling, my heart.
downstairs with Miss Nyrie now. Have fun. Oh, you have to tuck it in. You're about to have to. Yeah, this is pretty. We don't have to cover it. I gotta say, it's a beautiful thing to watch those kids. What a beautiful promise that is.
you, Father God. We thank you for the blood that was shed on the cross. We thank you for the sacrifice that you made. We thank you, Father God, that without that, we wouldn't be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And we just ask, Father, if there's those that are out there that need you, that they will find you. There is no anxiety. There is no, there is no anything. You are a child of God. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken.
Jesus, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Father, we come into your presence this morning. We come to your, your throne this morning, lifting up our hearts to you, our hands, in an act of worship, in an act of surrender to your will and to your way. We thank you, Father, that you are with us, that you have not left us, you have not forsaken us, but rather, Father, you are with us and you are leading us into all areas that you have for us, all of us, Father. Lord, I, I think this morning, as many do, of the situations happening around our world, in the Ukraine, all of it, Father. I see in my mind's eye all the world leaders. I pray, Father, that you would be with them. I pray, Father, that, that you would be with them in the most vulnerable spot to get their attention. Meet them in that moment where you can break through and they hear you. And, and not only do they hear you, they know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is your voice that is speaking to them. And then, Father, as you break through into those moments, into that vulnerability, I, I pray, Father, that, that they would sense their need for a savior, for you. I, I pray, Father, that the weight of the world that they are feeling on their shoulders, I pray, Father, that they would think of the world that they're carrying and that they would Submit to you, to your will, to your ways. In the blink of an eye, you could come back. And we long for that day, Jesus. We long for that day that you come back to gather us. That is our great hope, the hope of the resurrection, the hope of the rapture, the hope of what's to come. We ask, Father, that you would feed our hope and starve our doubts. And Father, as you feed our hope, may we share that with others. Because what you give to us, Father, is never meant to be hoarded. It is meant to be shared and given. So, Father, I pray that you would continue to be with our world, with our leaders. I pray, Father, for your bride. I pray, Father, that you would cleanse us that we would truly stand before you without spot or wrinkle or stain, that we would open up our arms, our mind, our hearts to you, Father, for you to come in and have your way within us. Lord, I pray for unity within the body, your body, your church, I pray, Father, that you would allow us 
to, to have such unity within us that when people look at us, they say, oh yeah, that's those Christians. That's just those Christians. Father, help us to have that kind of a reputation. Father, I pray for our community this morning. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to, to bless our community, that you would continue to open doors for us to engage with our community and to love our community. Father, show us how to love people. Show us how to reach people with your good news. Father, it, it dawns on me that, you know, we can invite anybody anywhere. But when we invite somebody here to your home, there should be something different happening here than what is happening elsewhere. And so, Father, I pray that you would continue to set us apart as your holy church. Help us to walk in the light that you've shed on our path. Be with our church, our finances, Father. Lord, I just pray that you would continue to meet us at our point of need. And give you thanks because we know that you are faithful to do that. And I pray, Father, <clears throat> as the COVID restrictions ease and people take off their masks tomorrow. Some will, some won't, and that's okay. Father, I pray that we would be kind to one another, that we would um, accept where people are at in their level of comfortability in removing some of the restrictions from their own lives. And so, Father, I just pray that you would allow us, your children, to be kind, to be gentle, to be understanding, to be filled with love and goodness towards others this week. I pray, Father, as I break open your word in these next few minutes, that you would be with us today, that you would speak through me, and that it wouldn't be my words that people hear, but they would be yours, Father. Thank you, because you're so faithful to us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 off to speak. So Jen asked me to read Revelation 3.1.6 to the church in Sardis. To the angel of the church in Sardis, these are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You are, oh sorry. Okay, I'm going to just start that over. <laughs> These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains and what is about to die. For I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. I hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know of what time I will come to you. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my Father and his angels. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Thank you, Jessica. So we are moving through our 
Revelation study. Wrong button there. And uh, we're going to just do... Uh, okay. Uh, so, who is the author of Revelation? We're going to do a recap here, people. Who is the author of the book of Revelation? John, John right. And where is John? <laughs> the island of Patmos. And who is John addressing? And in particularly, who is he addressing in the seven churches? The angel, which is who? That's right. And how are these cities connected? Part of the trade guild, right? So it's like they're on um, like a, a, a map, like a triangular map is what they say. And so how has Jesus been described in, in these letters? Do you remember? Fire in his eyes, bronze feet. He's got the double-edged sword. All these things. So this morning, we're looking at the church in Sardis. This morning, uh, Jesus is described as the fullness of the Holy Spirit. He's described as the one of the, of the sevenfold spirit of God and the seven stars. You know, this is the first church that Jesus doesn't start off with the things they're doing right. It's an interesting observation. He says, instead, he says, I know all the things you do and that you have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. We need to look at this. Uh, the church had a reputation for doing all the right things. So their actions, they were on point. You know, if, if, if you're not sure what that means, that means like... Um, Marcel, say it again. Doing the most. Doing the most. It, it, yeah, like, and it, it means like it was, it was, it looked good. Like it looked like they had their their boots proper, their handbags proper, their hats proper, everything. They were feeding people. They were clothing people. They were doing it all. But they were dead. Hmm. Of course. It, it, he wasn't talking a physical death, but spiritually dead. As I sit and ponder, I have to admit, I have been a part of Bible studies where the curse words were flying around about, along with talking about the things of God and, and the things of him. And at first, when I first joined this study, I was like, whoa, I don't know if I want to go back. Um, because let me tell you, they were some really blue words. Um, and, but after a while of being in this study, I realized that there was an energy that was in this study. And this energy that was alive in this study, I have to say, isn't at most studies with believers who have been following the Lord for many, many, many years. There was a difference in passion. There was a, there was a difference in um, even, even how people engaged in the text. So when I was in that Bible study, um, and like I said, the, the blue words, they were going everywhere. But you know what else was going everywhere? Real words of truth. How does this scripture actually apply to me? How do I actually live this scripture out? There was a hunger there. There was a passion there. There was a desire there. And as I've sat in studies with, with people who, who have, have followed Jesus for a long time, there is, um, there is a, an air of, I know what this says. I know what I'm supposed to do. I've had that air myself a few times. I'm not going to lie. 
I had it one morning, I was getting ready to go share my testimony at Teen Challenge. And the Lord said to me, I want you to sit down and read from the book of Jonah. And I thought, okay, Lord, I've read it like a hundred times, these four little chapters. What could you possibly have to say to me today through that? Well, let me tell you, God spoke lots through that little book that morning. But I had the idea and the attitude that I knew it already. What could po God possibly teach me? And I wonder this morning, as we're reading this, if any of us are in that boat this morning. Our works look really good, but we're dead. I find it too bad that people get to know our actions before they get to know our hearts. I think if we did this, I think in reverse, I think our world would be kinder. So if people got to know our hearts before our actions, I think our world would be a little kinder. And Jesus says to, to them, wake up. This is a command. This isn't a gentle reminder. If he were here standing in our presence, he would most assuredly raise his voice, wake up! It's like getting your teenager up in the morning. I don't know, I've had four. They're not always easy. Some are easier than others. <clears throat> Cassandra was much easier to get up than the others. <laughs> I, I know I just seen her back there and made her pop her head up. But, uh, you know, you, you, you call your teenagers to get them up in the morning, right? Come on, Cassandra, get up, get up, get up. And then once they get up, you have to give them instructions. Once Jesus has their attention, he gives directions for their footsteps. Jesus just doesn't wake people up for no reason. You know that? He doesn't wake us up for no reason. He gives us a purpose, and he ordains our steps, just like he did for this, the church in Sardis. Strengthen what little remains, for even what is left is almost dead. I find that your actions do not meet the requirements of my God. Remember, Jesus saw all they did. He knew their reputation, how they were known to others, but he also knew something that the others did not. He knew their heart. He knew what was and wasn't in their hearts. He knew the service that made others say, oh, they must have great faith. Look what God is doing. He knew the motivation for the service. And it wasn't about him or his kingdom. It was about their reputation. Jesus is so kind, though, even in his reprimand. <laughs> I love Jesus. I, I, I love his kindness be, because this is, this is truly kindness at the epitome. He, he says, he gives them direction to find their way out. You know, isn't that like our God? He, he gives us direction to find our way out. He, he tells us what to do to get our life back. He says, go back to what you heard and believed at first. Hold to it. Repent and turn to me again. Go back to what you heard and believed at first. How many here today remember the day they gave their heart to the Lord? Yeah. Go back and do what you did at first. That first love, that that. I am head over heels in love with Jesus. And then he says, repent. What does it mean to repent? You know, it's not enough to say, I'm sorry. I I'm not going to do that again. No, it's not enough. There needs to be, I'm, I'm sorry, and a complete turn away from the sin and towards God. There needs to be a complete turn, not just, I'm sorry, 
and keep going. No, I'm sorry, and a complete about face where you're, you're walking in a different direction. Repentance. Repent and turn to me again. Jesus gives the solution to the problems as he identifies them. As I was preparing for this morning's message, it dawned on me, because I always go back and read, right? So I read through and I read forward. And so, because I want to make sure that I'm getting the fullness, right? And so as I was reading, it dawned on me that each time Jesus presents himself to the church, he presents himself as the solution to what they need. When Jesus presented himself to the church in Sardis, he presented himself as the fullness of the Spirit. That's how he presented, and that's what the church was missing, the fullness of the Spirit. And that means, friends, we don't get to pick and choose which parts of the Spirit we want. We get the fullness of his Spirit when his Spirit is alive and allowed to roam free in our sanctuaries, in our churches, when his Spirit is allowed to roam free, things happen. The kingdom gets built. Jesus always comes as what we need. Friends, I'm reminded this is the same with us. Jesus comes to us as we need him. He he meets us at our point of need. He reveals himself to each of us in a way that we need to hear from him. I remember um, when I was, I just gotten word that um, my uncle had been murdered. Um, I'd gotten word then that Pastor Tim had died. And I was not doing well at all. I was not doing well. And the only name I could think of to tell Ken to call was Pastor Rosemary. And, and as Ken called her for prayer, God met us there. God meets us at our point of needs. He comes in the way that we need him to come. One other time I was standing out here in the parking lot and, and a, a former member of the church was out there and what I needed was her arms to hold me up as my body collapsed. Jesus meets us at our point of needs. How has he met you? In closing, Jesus leaves them and us with a stern warning. If you don't wake up, I will come to you suddenly as unexpected as a thief. Friends, we never know when our house is going to be robbed. We, We just don't know. It it happens like a blink of an eye. One day, I was sitting on the couch here, up here in um, Preston Heights, and I got a phone call saying that our house had been broken into in Prince Edward Island. It happens in the blink of an eye. It happens so quickly. There's no preparing for it. It just happens. Jesus' stern warning If you don't wake up, I will come to you as suddenly, as unexpected as a thief. Jesus is not playing games. Friends, the fact that you are here or listening means God is trying to speak to you. He has drawn you here for such a time as this. Today, he is calling you to wake up to you, to who he is, because He not only sees your work, but he sees your heart. And he cares more about your heart than your works. And he cares more about where you will spend eternity than you do. He wants to spend it with you. The question that remains, are you listening? And if you are, what are you going to do about it? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much that you are the God who 
sometimes yells at us to wake up, that we need to be awoken from our slumber, Father, so that we can do the work that you've called and prepared for us to do, Father. Not only have you called us to do it, but you have prepared for us to do it, Father. So I pray, Lord, that you would awaken us to that call. I pray, Father, for those who are listening, I pray, Father, that you would awaken them. I pray, Father, for those who are not filled with your spirit today, that you would descend upon them in the name of Jesus with your spirit and fill them to overflowing. God, we are yours. We are your hands and feet. Have your way within us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Marcel is going to come and lead us in a closing song this morning and if yep yeah. um and if you are here this morning and you're wanting to be filled with the spirit then please come forward if you are here this morning and you are wanting to be um, just seeking god to to find that enter into that relationship with him then please come forward. I would love to pray with you this morning.
Father, we're so thankful that your blood never loses its power, that your blood is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, just as you are, Father. I pray, Lord God, that you would continue to be with us this week, that as you lead us into all areas that you have for us, Father, I pray that you would meet with us in the secret place, Father, as we take this time to seek you, Lord, to seek you with all our hearts with all our minds, with all our souls. In your name I pray, amen. 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 May God be with you all until we meet again. God bless. Bye-bye.